Here is the second part of the lecture and here we discuss about marine energy. Marine energy or the ocean energy encompasses wave, tidal stream, tidal range, ocean thermal, ocean current, runoff river and salinity etc. through which energy can be harnessed from oceans. Oceans are the source of enormous untapped energy that is accessible to most coastal countries. It is a form of hydropower that converts the energy of tides into electricity. Traditionally, it was not considered seriously due to high cost of installment, unavailability of suitable sites with sufficiently good tidal velocities. But later, new designs came and are considered very efficient in generating electricity. People have harnessed the tides and used its energy for many centuries. Tide mills, which are the precursors to today's tidal power plants, have great similarity to water wheels. The difference is that water must first be collected from the incoming tide before it can be released to rotate the water wheel. The oldest excavated tide mill is dated to the year 619. This was discovered at Northern Islands Nindram Monastery on Mahi Island in Strand Port Law. The power generated by this mill was probably used for grinding grains. Tide mills became more common during the Middle Ages. A tide mill would have a storage pond which filled up as the tide came in. As the tide went out, the pond emptied and moving water rotated a water wheel. By the 18th century, 76 tide mills were being in use in London alone. At one time, there were about 750 tide mills in operation around the shores of the Atlantic Ocean. This included about 300 on North American shores, about 200 in the British Isles and about 100 in France. The Rennes estuary in France was home to some of the historical tide mills. Now the Rennes River has the world's first tidal power generating station. It opened in 1966. As an improvement to early tide mills, it generates power during high tide and low tide. Here in the picture, the mechanism of working of an old tidal mill is shown. A tide mill is a water mill driven by tidal rise and fall. A dam with a sluice is created across a suitable tidal inlet or a section of river estuary is made into a reservoir. As the tides come in, it enters the mill pond through a one-way gate and this gate closes automatically when the tide begins to fall. When the tide is low enough, the stored water can be released to turn a water wheel. Tide mills are usually situated in river estuaries away from effects of waves but close enough to the sea to have a reasonable tidal range. Cultures that built such mills have existed since the Middle Ages and some may date back to the Roman period. A modern version of the tide mill is the electricity generating tidal barrage. Here in the picture is some collection of ancient tidal mills. Here in this picture, a world map is shown where high potential areas for tidal resources have been listed. The different zones have been colored in dark and light blue. The main regions are Canada, US, Chile, France, 
UK, India, Korea, Japan, China, and Australia, and some portions of Africa, especially the Madagascar area. The different types of marine renewable energy methods we are going to discuss in this lecture are tidal rise and fall, tidal ocean currents, waves, salinity gradient and thermal gradient. Here is listed the power generation by different forms of marine energy methods at global potential. Wave energy tops the chart with an annual production of 8,000 to 80,000 terawatt hour, followed by ocean thermal energy or thermal gradient method, which produces 10,000 terawatt hours. Next is osmotic pressure or salinity gradient, which produces 2,000 terawatt hours, and the least is generated by the marine current power and tidal energy with annual generation of more than 8 100 terawatt hour and 300 terawatt hour respectively. The oceans represent a vast and largely untapped source of energy in the form of surface waves, fluid flow, salinity gradients and thermal gradients. In stream turbines, in fast moving rivers, Tidal turbines placed in coastal and estuarine areas, ocean current turbines in areas of strong marine currents, and wave power converts the open coastal areas with significant waves, and ocean thermal energy converts in deep tropical waters. Tidal power is the energy from moving masses of water, a popular form of hydroelectric power generation. Tidal power generation comprises three main forms, namely tidal stream power, tidal barrage power, and dynamic tidal power. Here in the picture is shown Shiva Lake Tidal Power Station located in Gyeonggi province, South Korea. It is the world's largest tidal power installation with a total power output capacity of 254 megawatts. A tidal stream generator, often referred to as a tidal energy converter or TEC. It is a machine that extracts energy from moving masses of water, in particular tides. Although the term is often used in reference to machines designed to extract energy from runoff river or tidal estuarine sites. Certain types of these machines function very much like underwater wind turbines and are thus often referred to as tidal turbines. They were first conceived during 1970s, during the time of oil crisis. Tidal stream generators are the cheapest and the least ecologically damaging among the three main forms of tidal power generation. Next in the list is the tidal barrage power. A tidal barrage is a dam-like structure used to capture the energy from masses of water moving in and out of a bay or river due to tidal forces. Instead of damming water on one side like a conventional dam, a tidal barrage allows water to flow into the bay or river during high tides and release the water during the low tide. This is done by measuring the tidal flow and controlling the slow skates at key times of the tidal cycle. Turbines are placed at these sluices to capture the energy as the water flows in and out. Tidal barrages are among the oldest methods of tidal power generations, with tide mills being developed as early as 
the 6th century AD. In the 1960s, the 1.7 megawatt Kislaya Guba tidal power station in Kislaya Guba, Russia was built. Here is a picture showing the tidal power station at Rennes in France. Dynamic tidal power or DTP is a theoretical technology that would exploit an interaction between potential and kinetic energies in tidal flows. It proposes that very long dams, for example, 30 to 50 km length, be built from coast straight out into the sea or ocean without enclosing an area. Tidal phase differences are introduced across the dam leading to a significant water level differential in shallow coastal areas featuring strong coast parallel oscillating tidal currents such as found in the UK, China and Korea. Induced tides could extend the geographic viability of a new hydro atmospheric concept or lunar pulse drum discovered by a Devon inventor in which tidal water piston pushes or pulls a metered jet of air to a repertory air actuator and generator. The principle was demonstrated at London Bridge in June 2019. Plans for a 30 meter 62.5 kilowatt hour pilot installation on a local authority tidal estuary shoreline in the Bristol Channel are underway. Here in the slide is shown the different types of turbines for tidal water currents. As we have already seen the different types of turbines in the wind energy, a more resemblance we can see here in the tidal water currents as well. These are horizontal axis turbines, vertical axis turbines and hydrofoils. Here is the collection of pictures showing installation of turbines at the seabed. Marine current turbines work in principle much like submerged windmills but driven by flowing water rather than air. The main difference is that marine current turbines of a given power rating are smaller because water is 800 times denser than air and they can be packed closer together because tidal streams are normally bidirectional whereas wind tends to be multidirectional. In axial turbines, the production of energy is around 750 kilowatts to 1.5 megawatts. The average diameter of the rotors is 15 to 20 meters. Installed on a monopile of 3 meter height. The average rotation is 10 to 20 rpm. These are deployed in multi-unit farms or arrays. Here in this slide is listed the relative merits of tidal turbines. The main advantages are low impact to the visual sites, low noise, high predictability and high power density that could be harvested. However, the main disadvantages are maintenance costs are too high, 
cost for power distribution is also high it has limited upside capacity and the power generation is intermittent now we shall discuss about the wave technologies the different kinds of wave technologies are listed here below these are oscillating water column overtopping devices and oscillating bodies point absorbers and surge devices we shall see these one by one now we shall discuss one by one about the types of wave technologies and listed mainly these are oscillating water columns pilamis wave dragon archimedes wave swing macab wave pump power boy and echo boy the oscillating water column generates electricity in two step process as a wave enters the column it forces the air in the column up the closed column past a turbine and increases the pressure within the column as the wave retreats the air is drawn back past the turbine due to the in reduced air pressure on the ocean side of the turbine the well turbine rotates in the same direction regardless of the air flow thus generating irrespective of upward or downward movement of the water column the reinforced concrete capture chambers set into the excavated rock face the air is compressed and depressed by the oscillating wire water column which causes the air to be forced through the well turbine and then drawn back Oscillating water columns are a type of wave energy converter that harness energy from the oscillation of the sea water inside a chamber or hollow caused by the action of waves. Oscillating water columns have shown promise as a renewable energy source with low environmental impact. Because of this multiple companies have been working to design increasingly efficient oscillating water column models oscillating water columns are devices with a semi submerged chamber or hollow open to the sea below keeping a trapped air pocket above the water column waves force the column to act like a piston moving up and down forcing the air out of the chamber and back into it this continuous movement force a bidirectional stream of high velocity air which is channeled through a power take off the power take off system converts the air flow into energy in models that convert air flow to electricity the power take off system consists of a bidirectional turbine this means that the turbine always spins in the same direction regardless of the direction of the air flow allowing the energy to be continuously generated capture wave device is a floating device as the wave hit the structure they flow up a ramp and over the top hence the name overtopping into a raised water impoundment reservoir on the device in order to fill it once captured the potential energy of the trapped water in the reservoir is extracted using gravity as the water returns to the sea via a low head kaplan turbine generator located at the bottom of the wave capture device Pilamis wave power also called sea snake it is a technology that uses the motion of ocean surface waves to create electricity 
Each module contains a complete electro-hydraulic power generation system with a single seabed cable linking several devices to the shore. The Pilamis is cylindrical with four main tube segments linked by hind joints. Each segment measures 120 meter long and 3.5 meter wide and weighs 750 tons when fully ballasted. The machine operates semi-submerged extracting power from the wave induced motion of the hinge joints. This power is res resisted by hydraulic ramps which pump high pressure oil through smoothing accumulators to hydraulic motors. Each module contains a complete electro-hydraulic power generation system with a single seabed cable linking several devices to the shore. Each machine is held in position by a moving system combining floats and weights that prevent the moving cables from becoming tucked. This maintains enough restraint to keep the pilamis positioned but allows the machine to swing head on to the oncoming waves. The pilamis is ideally moored in water around 50 to 60 meter deep, often 5 to 10 kilometer from the shore. This gives access to large swell waves but avoids the coast of a longer submarine cable. The pressurized hydraulic oil is led to accumulators and a reservoir from the hydraulic motors are supplied and rotate to drive a 250 kilowatt power generator. These are usually three units in one system on the structure giving a total power output of 750 kilowatt. A Palamis wave generation field has been tested and commissioned off the Portuguese coast supplying 2.25 megawatt of power to their grid. A similar array has been planned for the construction of a wave farm of the Orkney coast. The first Pilamis P2 type wave generator arrived at the EMEC that is European Marine Energy Center in Orkney on 5th of November 2011. Pilamis have secured seabed leases for the wave farm that will consist of up to 14 Pilamis machines. These will be located in the wave farm of Bernira Island Coast, being 100 square kilometers in size, is estimated to produce 10 megawatt of power. The Pilamis device is not expected to have any harmful effect to the environment, although it does contain hydraulic oil. The manufacturer states that there are only small quantities and a spill would be too minor to cause danger to the native marine life. The oil is also biodegradable in salt water, so there would be no need for an expensive cleanup effort. The working procedure is based on the principle of the flow, that is Archimedes principle. The only moving part is an air-filled floater. Waves create an up and down movement due to applied pressure on the floater which is located in a lower fixed cylinder. A linear generator based in the cylinder. This movement is converted into electricity and then transmitted to the shore. Each unit is currently rated at 1.2 megawatts equal to electrical demand of approximately 500 household energy. Here is shown the structures of Archimedes wave swing apparatuses installed at the seabed.
The McCaff wave pump has three pontoons linearly hinged together and pointed parallel to the wave direction. The center pontoon is attached to a submerged damper plate which causes it to remain still relative to the fore and aft pontoons. Hydraulic pumps attached between the center and end pontoons are activated as the waves force the end pontoons up and down. The pressurized hydraulic fluid can be used to drive a motor generator rated at 250 to 500 kilowatt. Here is shown some real life pictures of Makeup Way Pump. The vertical movement of the buoy drives a broad, neutrally buoyant disc acting as a water piston contained in a long tube beneath the buoy. The water piston motion in turn elongates and relaxes a hose containing seawater and the change in the hose volume acts as a pump to pressurize the seawater as shown in the picture. The Pelton turbine plays inside the buoy structure generates electricity. Here in this diagram have been shown the buoy structures arranged in a linear manner on the ocean surface. Collectively, these generate electricity and transmitted by power cables. Now we shall discuss about the BioWave and BioStream. BioPower company has created a wave power system called BioWave Tim. Each unit is mounted on the seafloor. A pivot near the seafloor converts the motion of the three floating blades and stem to the electrical energy via an onboard power conversion module. The wave motion is converted into hydraulic pressure that is spins a turbine which generates electricity that is fed to the shore via subsea cables. This design can harness energy from dynamic waves and exhibits robust performance. BioWave trademark absorbs wave energy from the surface to the ocean floor. The unit can also sink and flatten against the seafloor to avoid damage from excess wave energy. It pivots to optimize directional wave energy. The biowave design mimics the flexible stocks of undersea flora pivot, maintaining orientation relative to wave force. Floating blades also mimic the floats of the undersea flora. The unit can collapse against the seafloor during excessively violent wave conditions, mimicking the compliance of the kelp and other undersea vegetation. The relative merits of the wave power has been listed here. 
The main advantages are low system cost of installation. It gives space and opportunity for the development of mariculture. It allows commercial and recreational uses of the wave power. It has long operational lifetime. It is non-polluting and inexhaustible supply of energy. However, the main disadvantages are high capital cost for initial construction, high maintenance cost, intermediate mitten power production, requires favorable weight wave climate, degradation of scenic view, interference to other uses and reduce wave heights. Now we shall discuss about the ocean thermal energy conversion. The ocean thermal energy conversion utilizes the ocean's 20 degrees Celsius natural thermal gradient between the warm surface water and the cold deep sea water to derive a Rankine cycle. Ocean thermal energy conversion utilizes the world's largest solar radiation collector that is the ocean. The ocean contains enough energy power for all of the world's electrical needs. The system is operated by a th ocean thermal energy conversion plant. It consists of an extensively designed heat exchanger evaporator and heat exchanger condenser and pipes extended through the depth of the ocean. The pumps flow in the working fluid and the heat is utilized for producing electricity. Ocean thermal electric conversion power plants can supply energy for desalination of water for the supply to the agricultural fields, to aquaculture, to air conditioning of the houses and desalination plants for fresh water. Here is listed the relative merits of the ocean thermal energy conversion. Ocean thermal energy conversion systems can produce fresh water as well as electricity. This is a significant advantage for an island such as the Virgin Islands, for example, where fresh water is limited. There is enough solar energy received and stored in the warm tropical ocean surface layers to provide most, if not all, of present human energy needs. The disadvantages, however, are the ocean thermal energy conversion plants must be located where the difference of about 40 degrees Fahrenheit occurs year around. The ocean depth must be available fairly close to the shore area based facilities for economic operation. Construction of an ocean thermal energy conversion plant and laying pipes in coastal waters may cause localized damage to the reefs and near shore marine ecosystems sometimes. Here is the picture of the world's only open cycle ocean thermal energy conversion facility at Keyhole Point on the Kona coast of Hawaii. Here is a comparison between different marine energy technologies in terms of its maturity has been displayed. The wave energy is the largest explored method in terms of global potential followed by the marine current power, tidal energy, salinity gradient and the ocean thermal energy conversion systems. There is 
the potential to develop 20,000 to 80,000 terawatt hours per year of electricity generated by changes in the ocean temperatures, salt content, movement of tides, currents, waves and swells. Indonesia as archipelagic country with three quarters of its area as ocean has 49 gigawatt recognized potential ocean energy and has 727 gigawatt theoretical potential ocean energy. Here is listed the relative merits of ocean and marine energy. The main advantages of the ocean energy is reduction in dependence on fossil fuels, renewable and free, no emission of greenhouse gases. However, the main disadvantages are at present the production cost is more than the energy generated. It causes displacement of wildlife habitats. The technology is not fully developed and needs more extensive research. Transfer of electricity is a main problem. This brings us to conclude the lecture 5. And here is the assignment question for you. Which of the ocean energy methods do you think has an edge over rest of the others and why? Please write one or two paragraphs and send it to my email.